Hey folks, Buck Risby here. This is another edition of Ultimate Lifespan TV, and today we're going to continue our second in our series on natural stress relief techniques that can help save your life. So let's jump into it. Um, today we'll talk about sleeping stress away, and one of the first things that you can do, and our moms probably told us told us this many a time, is get to bed early. I've got uh, two younger kids, and we try to get them to bed in, by 8 o'clock. I wish I could get to bed by 8 p.m., but I think that most of us need probably between 7 or 8 hours of sleep. I know I do. Um, some people tell me they can get away with 4 or 5 hours of sleep. I'm not sure that I really buy that. Maybe their bodies you know, wake up or their, their sleep is getting interrupted or what have you. But I think in general, most of us need to get at least uh, seven or eight hours of sleep. So you got to plan for that. You need to make sure that you give yourself some wind down time. You get to bed early. You allow yourself to fall asleep and get that full seven to eight hours. So get to bed early. Number two, this is interesting, um, especially in the winter time. You know, we jump into bed. It might be a little bit chilly under the covers. It, it'll take longer for us to get to sleep if our feet are cold. So throw on those socks. And I've been doing this recently, and it's helped helped incredibly. I've got a, a thicker uh, a comforter that we have over the bed and sheets and so forth. But still, that's not quite enough. I jump in the bed, and I've more than on, on more than one occasion, my feet have felt cold, and it took me longer to fall asleep. So wear those socks to bed. I actually wear something very similar to that sock puppet you see there, gym socks to bed, and they work perfectly. You don't need to wear itchy wool socks or anything like that. The next thing is go ahead and take a nice, relaxing hot shower or bath. We've got the king the king sitting in the bathtub there. And, uh, you know, all of us know how good that feels. So jumping, taking your shower at night, a nice relaxing, going ahead, especially if you live in a major city, major metro metropolitan area, where you take mass transit or anything like that, you know, you can have some grime. Uh, you might have, if you've been act active, you know, moving out and about, you might have some sweat on your body. So taking that nice, hot shower or hot bath before you get in bed and then you've got some nice clean sheets on the bed you got your socks on so your feet are warm that's going to make a huge difference it's going to make you uh, fall asleep faster and, and get a much deeper deeper restful sleep and then finally um, make sure that you use the bathroom right before bed. I've got a seven-year-old. I go through a routine with him, and uh, you know we play some games together before uh, before bedtime. He throws on his jammies, brushes teeth. This is my son Lucas, and then just before bed, the last thing he's got to use the bathroom. And um, I practice what I preach. I do that too, so that I don't feel like I need to feel the urge to wake up in the middle of the night. So use that bathroom right before bed. So continue on. Um, this is a big one now. For probably the last 20 years, up until maybe a couple of years ago, um, I had a television in my bedroom, and I, I don't know, just out of habit, I had the TV on, TV in the bedroom. We go to bed and we turn, flip on the TV, maybe watch a, a show or two, watch the news, and then try to get to sleep. And that's something that, if you can at, at all possible, work to get the TV out of the bedroom. Now what we do is we reserve the bedroom uh, for sleep and uh, you know pillow talk and things like that but TV we actually have in another area of the room. I actually have a little entertainment center and uh, we'll watch TV there, watch a couple shows and then turn it off and give ourselves at least an hour 30 minutes to at least an hour to wind down, relax, and not think about TV, not think about news. And uh, I know in our last episode we talked about laughter and maybe turning off bad news and focusing on sitcoms and stuff like that. Well, you know, TV is fine. Not an issue with TV. But having it in your bedroom, uh, not recommended. I, I, I didn't always practice what I preach here, but I do now. And one of the other things is that my wife is actually interested in uh, feng shui, which is a Chinese method of uh, arranging things in the household, elim eliminating clutter, and uh, you know, helping you know create a more restful, peaceful, successful environment. And uh, one of the things they teach is to not have any mirrors in the bedroom. And the, the TV, because of the reflective surface of the glass, is considered a type of mirror. So I don't know if the the ancients in China had. Uh, you know, forecasted that we would have TVs in the bedroom, but we might want to listen to their ancient wisdom and, and take that out of the bedroom and at least turn off the TV at least an hour before going to bed. Give yourself some time to wind down. So the second, the next thing is skipping the alcohol. Now, I enjoy a, uh, a good glass of red wine every now and again. 
Um, and in another e- edition of Ultimate Lifespan TV, we talked about the ben- the health benefits of red wine and specifically Pinot Noir because it has res- resveratrol in it. Um, so I enjoy a glass of red wine, but I typically drink it uh, earlier in the evening, maybe you know between 6 and 7 p.m., and then give my body plenty of time to process and eliminate the alcohol before going to bed. You may, some of us you know, may believe that you know alcohol makes us drowsy. It does, but then later on, it can interrupt your sleep cycle, wake you up, and then you know cause problems. So, uh, skip the alcohol, or at least skip the alcohol right before bed. Very, very important. And then, this is huge for me. This is really, really big. Sleep in a very dark room, and what I mean by dark, I mean no ready lights on your phone blinking, uh, your alarm clock should be dimmed down to the dark level so that it's not even, there's no light emanating from your alarm clock at all. There, your um, smoke detector, if it has a blinking light, you should have some tape over that. You know, certainly test that uh, once a month and make sure you listen for the battery alarm to go off if the battery's low. But uh, eliminate any source of light, no matter how small, uh, or how dim it may appear, and we've we've gone to the extremes of we actually had out in the in the hallway just outside our room. We leave the door open so we can hear the kids. We have out in the hallway our thermostat. A thermostat had this indiglo glow screen on it, and there was no way to turn that off. So my wife actually made a cover for that and put it on it so that we can cover it up at night and eliminate the light. So take away all the light because what that does is it'll um, uh, cause your body. It'll interrupt the, the production of melatonin in your body and uh, interrupt your sleep cycle, your circadian rhythm. So very, very important. Sleep in a dark room. If for some reason you can't do that, then obviously wear those sleep shades over your eyes you've seen in the old-time movies. Um, those may be coming back in vogue. Get those sleep shades. If you've ever been on an international flight, you'll know what I'm talking about because they give you a set. Um, and put those on and sleep with those. So very, very important. So um, one other tip I'm going to leave you with here is uh, something that will help you with your sleep cycle is to get a little physical. And uh, recently we had a snowstorm here, actually a couple snowstorms here in the Northern Virginia area, got about two feet or more of snow. That's me with my young son, Lucas. He's actually out there helping me shovel the snow. I'm not saying you need to have that level of activity, but certainly getting out, moving around, taking a walk, you know, un- if a lot of us are stuck in our chairs working in an office environment, you know, not having the activity can have an impact on our ability to uh, f- uh, have that uh good deep REM sleep cycle that we need for uh, for for a healthy healthy lifestyle so um, go ahead and make sure you get some exercise I'm not I'm not professing that you should uh, you know go run three miles or do anything you know uh, excessive for you uh, obviously this has to work for you and fit into your lifestyle and that's what I'm trying to do here with these with these natural stress relievers is give you some tools that you can use and apply right away very, very easily. So this is the second in the series of natural stress relievers. We have one more. I'm really excited about the next one. I think you'll be uh, equally excited and uh, look forward to getting that out to you in the next few days. I do want to hear from you are what are the things that help you get a better sleep at night? I've covered a few here, but I'm sure I'm missing some. So go ahead and scroll down and leave a comment with what your best uh, secret is for getting a great night's sleep. Share that with us. I look forward to hearing from you and commenting back on that. This is Buck Risby with Ultimate Lifespan TV, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.